board on this. There we go. So hi everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining. Uh, like I say, hopefully we'll, we'll still have some, some more people joining on, but we'll just carry on as normal. Sorry, I think that's you, you Amy, if you don't mind muting. Yeah, if everyone just mutes um, for the background noise, you know, whilst whilst the speakers are on and then we can obviously open it up to questions and it can be quite conversational really so as you all know it's national apprenticeship week and um, this day in particular is celebrating success so we just wanted to have a chat with you know some of our amazing graduates which we'll be meeting shortly um and you know some current apprentices uh, and, and all that kind of stuff so what i'm going to do is introduce you to our brilliant panellists. We were going to have one more, but she um, she sadly can't make it today. But we've got Emma, Ira and Marco joining us. So they all have graduated, um, all with a distinction as well. Fantastic. Um, Emma a bit longer ago, um, so she's probably been in industry for a few years now, but I'll obviously let, let Emma tell you all about that. Um, and Ira and Marco are in the same cohort uh, and they graduated sort of probably August, September last year and have just been brilliant on the programme and as you'll hear each of them in their careers since. So uh, Emma I'll start with you, you were getting warmed up before, if you just introduce yourself and what way I suppose where you um, you know where you started working at the apprenticeship to where you are now really. Yeah as, as the veteran, the veteran apprentice. Yes. <laughs> um, so before I started JUICE I did go to university and I got my degree. Um, and I thought, okay, I've done this now, so surely a job's kind of going to be straight after it. And I struggled so hard to get a job because even though I did really well at uni, I didn't have enough practical experience and kind of to work in media in particular, they wanted skill-based learning. Mm. So didn't really know what to do, but I did some work experience with the Northwest Business Leadership Team and Sandy and Tangerine sat on that board. So found out about the Juice Academy, went down to um, kind of the boot camp day put on my kind of x-factor style number and didn't really know what I was entering into yeah. just people go oh can I take a photo of this and if you were gonna you know um if you were being faced with one pigeon or like a thousand pigeons what would you choose all these sorts of random questions being thrown at you throughout the day but I just I loved it and I thought no this is absolutely the right sort of um environment for me so I got my apprenticeship with the UTC at Media City and I knew again that I was just in the right place. So Media City was absolutely the right place, the right fit for me. I loved the vibe there, I loved the people I was meeting. And then I took the opportunity to go to um, the Northern Powerhouse Partnerships Apprentice Summit. And then whilst I was there, they were talking about what was their big ambition for the North. And I realized I really enjoy this kind of big picture thinking and having my kind of opinion heard. So they invited me to go to the launch of a report and brought Georgia along with me. Mm -hmm. And we sat in the audience and they were making like all of these comments talking, you know the north needs to do this and do this and I was like itching thinking like I need to have my opinion like heard but I thought I'm the youngest person in the room we were one of like 10 women in the room mm. everyone else was like kind of more experienced or a CEO of a company and George was like ask your question do it so I stood up and I basically heckled George Osborne who was the former chancellor of the exchequer in front <laughs> of like the CEO of Siemens and Drax and like all these really important people and I was like how are you making all of these promises about the North when, you know, you're at like the end of your career? Like, are you actually doing anything to listen to people our age? So on the, on the back of that, they actually kind of ended up approaching me and they said, we'd like people like you in our organisation. Would you like to do finish your apprenticeship with us? So I did. And that was a brilliant opportunity. And, I, you know, I was the apprentice, but I was going on tours of the North with government ministers and MPs and we were doing bits of lobbying and working with CEOs of like the biggest businesses in the North so to have that exposure was fantastic and then it ended up with I was coming to the end of my apprenticeship and my line manager saw the advertise the advertisement for um, a social media executive at Media City and he saw it and went I think this is your dream job isn't it working for Media City and I was like yeah did the um the um interview and I just knew talking to those people and being in that office and speaking to Peel that was my job. That was the company I was working for. And I just loved it. So got off of the job there. And then whilst I was there, I've won um, Young Media and Marketing Professional of the Year at the Insider Awards. And also won Placemaking Project of the Year for my work on Box and the Docks. And I loved that role so much. But they ended up offering me a promotion to go and work for our parent company just before Christmas. 
and then that's when I've entered my new role now as communications manager at PLL. That's my potted history. Amazing. Yeah, I just remember so well when you just take me back to the, the summit day and you're yeah. like, shall I, shall I not? And I was like, go for it. And then after like you were buzzed and everything. So it just shows to, you know, do be the one to stand up and like raise your hand, ask questions, challenge. It really does get you places. Um, and, you you know, you'll be noticed out of that. That's one of Sandy's tips, isn't it? That up, that person in the crowd that always like, you know, raise their hand and is looking up. It yeah. really, really does. Uh, you know, it does work. You do get noticed. So, yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Emma. That, what a brilliant story. Um, Ira, how about you? Tell us your intro into the, the academy and what you've been up to. Yeah, so I started, well, first I applied when I was in college, like midway through college. Um, because I was always quite like academic and I was on an Oxford scheme and I was like a member of youth parliament and I thought that I was going to go into politics at one point yeah. and then halfway through college I was like yeah I don't want any of this um, I switched out all my e-levels a lot of my teachers were like what are you doing um, and I switched it for more creative things so like graphics media because I realized as much as I love doing all that um, I just had more passion and I was becoming more energized by all the other stuff came across Jews Academy and um, someone recommended it to me didn't think anything of it and then I remember I went to an event to get out of a college lesson and Jews Academy had a stand I, re I remember this like it was yesterday and because it was Laura who was on that stand who was oh, going yeah. to be speaking today um, and I was like oh my gosh this is what I want to do like this is exactly it so I applied and then the pandemic hit so it was a bit of a wait um, and then our experience was a bit different because we didn't do a boot camp, we did videos. And I watched my video quite recently and it was the most cringe thing I've <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> like I'm extra as a person. I had like cutaways, like things I've done, I had a voiceover, I had an animation. <laughs> like I just, I knew that I really wanted to be part of the Juice Academy. Um, and then like did the interviews and then I got my job where I am now at Lightbulb Media which I absolutely love. It's just like the perfect culture fit for me. Um, and it's quite a like tongue in cheek, you know, we do things, we do things differently, but we never say that because that's also very cringe. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I just love it. I started off as an apprentice, finished my apprenticeship. Then I thought I wanted to do graphic design. So I went into a graphic designing role. Then I decided I didn't want to do graphic design and I've gone back to being a content executive now when I manage another apprentice called Morgan, who's a Juice Academy apprentice. So it's yeah. been quite, quite a lot of changes along the way, but I'm really happy with where I am. Oh, amazing. I love that story as well, because it feels like it really is like a meant to be where you yeah. sort of went to that event, you saw Laura and then you met Laura again, didn't you, last, yeah. last year at the graduation? Um, and I just love the, the connections like that. And, you know, that is what, you know, not just the Juice Academy, but like apprenticeships and networking and things like that can do. Yeah. Um, and it's just amazing. And now you're mentoring Morgan and she's doing brilliantly as well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. And another point is as well, it's great, you know, coming in at apprentice level and being able to try your hand out a few different things Like you said you wanted to yeah. go to the graphic design and then you're back to content creation and you've got the platform to be able to do that you know when you yeah. you are starting out and developing so that's brilliant uh marco you're up next <laughs> uh yeah of course so um my journey started in, in march 2020 so it was a week before the first ever lockdown uh and i'd just been made redundant of my retail job of four years uh so it was the, and i found out over social media practically so it's like, like, you'd think it was like the worst thing ever, but I was actually quite relieved because I thought like, this is like the way that I wanted it to happen in terms of I'm now back on track to kind of pursue what I actually want to do. Uh, and so I started doing like online courses um, and, you know, doing like you know, looking at resources online. Uh, and then that's when I found the Juice Academy. Uh, and again, similar to uh, Ira, uh, you know, the onboarding process was uh, pretty much the video. And so I was very nervous about that. Uh, I don't think I did a, great job at it uh, I saw Iris um, like a few weeks later and I was like wow that was a that was an absolutely fantastic video so well it's still about your job so it, it did, it did. <laughs> so um and then I'm so I'm with uh, Venture Motion so uh, that's the company that I'm still with today so I've completed my apprenticeship uh, mm -hmm. and in my role now I oversee the whole content creation um graphic design videography illust um, illustration animation web design pretty much like a whole range of like 
uh, things and now we're looking to take on another apprentice and I'm uh, in a position where I, you know, I'm going to coach them and guide them. Uh, so we're looking to expand the business. So I'm very excited uh, to do that. I love that. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Emma, you're, it will have to be you next taking on your own apprentice. <laughs> So Emma, we'll go back to you and tell us sort of, you know, what one of you, your main takeaways from from the apprenticeship. And um, it was it was eye opening about how willing people are to help you. So I don't think it gets discussed enough that I think people maybe think that they have to do everything by themselves. But the apprenticeship really taught me about the importance of collaboration and that even though you're quite junior in a role, I could go up to someone who was really senior or might be a policy advisor or a special advisor or even a chief exec and say I find you really interesting like could I get a cup of tea with you please and can I just like I know you're busy but just 20 minutes to sit down and get some advice from you and they say yes or they'll say I might be a bit kind of I'm wrapped up in this but there's someone else who you know you'd be um it would be really good for you to speak to so I think that was a bit of an eye-opener for me and also just how brilliant um apprenticeships are so at my school, um, when we were picking our kind of what we were going to do after A-levels, apprenticeships just did not get discussed at all. Grammar school girls in my area just didn't do apprenticeships. That was for a college. And I wish that they'd spoken about it more. And that, you know, I don't regret my university experience at all. I loved it. And I, you know, did a lot of kind of development in myself and met loads of people, got a good, you know, grounding. But if I'd started that apprenticeship three years earlier, then who knows where I could be now? potentially so they're just so worthwhile you learn so much stuff doing an apprenticeship and I just wish people I think it's changing now mm. but I think it's that just how valuable and worthwhile apprenticeships are yeah absolutely that's that's brilliant and obviously we we couldn't agree more and um it is it is changing slowly they are being recognized as more of a you know a different path rather than the second option path you know but um but yeah it's, it definitely it helps when people like you as well talk about this and you know uh, the apprenticeship champions and that kind of stuff but you know like this for example we we, we connect with lots of schools and colleges so we can share this video to them and you know uh, there's some really great advice that's coming out through already um ira what about yourself what what, what would your sort of biggest takeaway be from your journey I even now really struggle with imposter syndrome and I just think what we're doing like everyone's getting the compliments or like you you're doing well your work's high standard but I remember just thinking like bro I'm not meant to be here and I think the most eye-opening thing is yes you are like of course you are you've done the process you do your work you know what you're doing it doesn't matter how old you are or like experience if you're willing to do something then you're good enough for it and I think that's the thing I would tell anyone straight away that's just like just do it and you are enough for it yeah brilliant great great piece of advice Marco what's your biggest takeaway um from the apprenticeship uh, I think personally the biggest takeaway for me was uh, the importance of managing yourself and the work balance between you know the Juice Academy and the Apprentify work world and your job commitment because I think on one hand for me I wanted to give 110% to my job commitments, but also show the same level of commitment to you know, the apprenticeship work as well. And so this is something that I struggled with a lot uh, initially, but um, through the help of like my boss and um, development coach, Rebecca, yeah. um, she, you know, fantastic in terms of being able to kind of coach Angel. me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, she's been absolutely amazing. So hopefully she, she sees this. Um, but yeah, being able to oh. translate this into kind of like managing multiple clients, projects and deadlines. So it's something that I've been able to learn, you know, throughout the whole apprenticeship. And uh, yeah, that's something that I've taken away from this. Yeah, brilliant. You can put that organisation that you've learned during your apprenticeship and it can it continues through um, through your job role. I'll let Rebecca know you gave her a shout out as well. She'll be <laughs> dead chuffed with that. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I'll just quickly um, bring in Meg to, to sort of um, explain what her, I mean, everyone here does does know Meg um, and her, her story has been, been brilliant as well. So Meg, obviously, if you just sort of tell them where you started, you know, at the start of the apprenticeship and coming from uni, um, just a little bit on yourself. As well. So yeah, similar to Emma, I, I went to university, absolutely loved it. I wasn't, it, I wasn't a person who disliked uni um I mean at A level it was the only option I was thinking of really and 
Um, again, apprenticeships weren't massively spoken about at my school. It was mainly university, then there'd be, oh, there's apprenticeships, but back to university. Um, and because I was like so creatively minded and music had been a massive part of just like my hobbies and education throughout school, that was a no brainer to me that I wanted to go and study music at uni. Um, and then after finishing uni, uh, well, in the midst of COVID as well, it was a really difficult to find jobs um, because the arts were hit, well, most industry, industries were hit badly through COVID anyway, but um, also that experience element of it. I, I had great theoretical knowledge, but when it came to actually like skills and experience in the workplace, I, I had very little. Um, so it gave me the opportunity to really think about what I wanted to do as a career because I, I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so after having like a long like think, I, I found that like the use of social media was quite prevalent throughout um, my education anyway for promoting myself as a musician but also I got involved with helping promote the university's concerts that they had every week and the musical theatre society showcases and although I didn't know a massive amount of what I was doing I was really enjoying it and that's what stemmed my interest in wanting to find out how businesses do that to promote their own services and products um, so I decided to have a good research and that's when I stumbled across the Juice Academy and um, I was offered the, the, the position to be the apprentice at Juice and um, yeah I found that it's my skills developed so quickly um, within that year period um, and found it like really beneficial um, for just like building skills for a career um, over what, what my university did I suppose in terms of like actual experience um and yeah i graduated in september time last year and another distinction may i add <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so and now i'm, I'm working at, at juice doing the content for the social media channels and also getting involved with helping with the apprentices and their apprenticeship journey which is really nice because it's a nice full circle brilliant and what would you say your biggest takeaway from the apprenticeship has been I'd say similar to to Emma, the sort of networking and collaboration, um, not being afraid to go up to people and ask them. It's still something that I, I struggle with anyway, but like going up to people and asking them questions, not be afraid to ask questions, even whether that's networking with um, other apprentices within your cohort, because I mean, that's a fantastic network within itself because you're going through the same journey, but they're also, and the interested and passionate about the same thing as you um however they're working for different companies really exciting companies so it's um it's great to learn from each other as well but also utilizing the tutors and um just ev like everyone around you basically and um, to ask as many questions as possible real thanks megan ira we'll, we'll come to you um not necessarily even just to do the apprenticeship might be an after but what's you probably your biggest learning that you've had in the workplace um, I think it is what you what you put in is what you get out. I think that's also. I don't think I answered the other question right. I don't think I fully understood the question. <laughs> I went on. I went on like a whole motivational tangent. <laughs> it, it, that motivational <laughs> tangent worked. Trust me, it was it was well, well received. It, <laughs> it's what you put in is what you get back out of it, and I think that was in my friendship and in the workplace. Is if I want more work, I you get up, you search for the opportunities, you do them. And it's the same with the apprenticeship. If you want to get involved with extra things, be the person to say, yes, I'm free or yes, I can make time for that. And you'll just gain and be able to learn just so much more. And like, that's something I definitely won't ever stop doing is like mm. looking for opportunities and ca carrying on being excited and passionate about what's out there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you and Meg, Marco and Emma have, have always been, uh, those those kind of people to volunteer to say well, yes, yes people <laughs> yeah yes people yeah and you know it, look where it's got you it's it's work so yeah fantastic Marco how about you what's your biggest learning in the workplace I think it's a similar point to uh, what Iris had really saying you know yes um, I think you know I've been able to kind of 
be part of different projects ranging from like graphic design and videography when I was asked to do animation I said yes I'd never done it before so I just, just winged it yeah I just winged it yeah I just went on YouTube, <laughs> YouTube and, I, and I just created a, a video um, <laughs> but it, it turned out pretty decent and from that I can keep growing and from that I think definitely saying yes to opportunities is, is the way forward um like recently I'm doing UI again something I've not done before so it's definitely taking on those opportunities to grow brilliant Emma how about you your biggest learning and the workplace um, I'd say it's you have to really love what you do and mm. kind of working for a company that has a culture that's reflected it reflects your values as well so I've worked in different departments at Peel but I just absolutely know that it's the right company for me. And they do kind of put their people first. They've got that people and culture department. And I think it's knowing that because they look after me, I, I want to look after like our business too. And I want to be an advocate for Peel. And I want to be able to talk about like, we're doing amazing things. And aligning as well with, I know I'm a bigger picture type person. Yeah. And Peel's that too. So they created Media City. We're trying to bring the Ryder Cup to Bolton. We're working on these like amazing things. And I think, yeah, this is absolutely a company that aligns with my values. They want the best out of me. I want the best of that company. And it means I go to work passionate, wanting to do my best. I'm happy, mm. so happy in my role. That's brilliant. Honestly, that makes me happy, like just to hear <laughs> that, because it's, you know, I think it it's it can be something that that is taken for for granted, and I think a lot of people now have finally realised that you know you do need to enjoy your job, and um, and and that that's great. So yeah, it's, it's amazing to hear that you're so happy with your role. Meg, what about yourself? What's your sort of biggest biggest learning from the workplace? I'd say to have courage. So not being afraid to sort of climb over those obstacles um, that may appear. I suppose at any time within your career. Um, because there's bound to be setbacks and maybe what you might class as failures, whether big or small, and not being afraid to just work your way around them and learn from them as well. Um, but also, again, not being afraid to uh, take up those big opportunities that you may be given um, just because you don't feel like you can do it. Just having that courage to do it. And then mm -hmm. if something doesn't go right, that's OK. You can learn from that. And then next time you can sort of improve and educate yourself. Yeah, definitely. Couldn't agree more. Um, how about uh, sort of if you were to give a piece of advice? I mean, we've got got a few people here that are on program currently. So, um, Ira, we'll go back to you. A piece of advice, um, which I mean, you've, you've already given quite a bit of advice. That's great. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a main piece of advice for the the learners here that are currently on program. Um, don't shut off a learning experience. I think there were moments in my apprenticeship where naturally I was like, yeah, this isn't for me. I don't like it. Or this topic isn't for me. Or I'm, I'm not going to go into whatever that is. Um, and actually that became like really valuable. And those were conversations that I can now be a part of. Or that helped me decide what I wanted to do when I was trying out different careers. So I would just don't give up on something because like, don't put it away and don't be like, no, that's not for me. Take it as an opportunity to learn about something new. Um, even if it's like a session like where you're tired and it's eight o'clock in the morning, just be like, okay, but I'm going to learn something and that could be relevant and you never know when it is. Um, there's this quote and I always like it because it's funny um, and I use it in my apprenticeship and bastard stuff. But it's a mind is like a parachute. It doesn't work if it's not open and it's always paired with just this man like screaming and falling. I think that's the same. And I just think it's like the means funny. I'll see if I can share it. But um, I, that's the way I think I'd approach your apprenticeship is like, you, you're not going to do well. You're not going to enjoy it if you don't take it in and try and learn and put effort into it. Mm, yeah. And keep that, like you said, keep that mind open. Yeah. And um, there's not, you're not, there's not everything that you're going to enjoy, but, you know, yeah. Finding out what you don't like and what you do like, you can only It do helps that. you so much. Yeah. Really yeah, does. Marco, what, what about you? Your your key piece of advice for our current apprentices here today? Uh, my advice would be to own your self-progression or in other words, be accountable for your own self-development. Uh, it might sound obvious, but for example, if you don't know how to do something, you know, 
find a way to do it like you know google it youtube mm-hmm. it like i do um or don't be afraid to ask for help um i think you need to remember that the juice academy and apprentice are there to help you uh, and especially you know the tutors like yourself georgia um heather and megan now um and apprentice coaches as well reach out to them if you if you have any um problems or if you don't know how to do something um i remember when i reached out to you georgia uh, when i needed some help and you put me in touch with one of the tutors uh, and i had a one-to-one with them so it's that sort of um, behaviors that I'd, you know that'll help you grow um by just taking the initiative to actually try and find out how to do something definitely and i really do like that that point marco because i i always do say sort of at the at the start in my intro piece you know um please do use the tutors like they are there to question and follow up with them and um, you know they're always happy to like um was it i think nathan was it in the end that did it with you um it was yeah 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 so they're always happy to jump on that extra call or you know give you that that extra sort of run through if if you need it um and then the same with the apprentice development coaches they they're just fantastic so um yeah great piece of advice marco emma what about you what what would your advice be um well does sandy still do those top 10 tips at the beginning of the yes so (laughs) <laughs> and it's well documented sandy Lindsay mba is basically my icon i love her <laughs> i love her so so much and i do owe like a lot of kind of where i am today has been because i just i absorbed every bit of advice she gave mm-hmm. to me mm-hmm. i was like no lay it on me keep giving me more, more advice what do you want me to go to what do you want me to get involved with but when she did vm top 10 tips at the start of vm apprenticeship i wrote them down and then you'll probably gather this I am a bit extra I we, we had just been taught Canva so I went and turned them into graphics and then I like, put them on social because I am a sucker as well clearly but I'll very see Claire's been writing down all the stuff too the top 10 tips they are so good and then there was one which first of all she said decisions are made by those who show up so everybody who's turned up to this call at 4 p.m on a Friday it's the right sort of group of people like they are opportunities are going to come your way because you're saying yes to these sorts of opportunities Mm -hmm. and I think the other one as well which is the best thing when you're an apprentice and you're still starting out and maybe there are those bits of imposter syndrome Sandy said it's more it's more important to be interested than interesting so if you go to a networking event and you're thinking oh I'm not going to like know anyone what am I going to talk about who would want to talk to me just ask them a few questions and again people find it so easy to talk about themselves that the conversation will naturally start going anyway. And that was like such a lifeline for me, rather than me just hanging around the coffee station for ages looking a bit weird. At least I had something I could like talk to people about then. And that was my like first thing to go, oh no, I can go to these now and do that. But Mm -hmm. honestly, any chance you've got to talk to Sandy, take it. Yeah, brilliant. And she she always says, you know, do, like reach out to me, go for a coffee. You know, she really she is willing to really, you know, invest that time in people. That's obviously, um, you know, you found found out Emma. Great, Megan. How about yourself? Your top I'd piece of advice. Very very similar to what everyone else has been saying, but uh, one phrase that was taught to me and has always stuck with me is "and then what." So what can you do next to sort of either stand out from everyone else or to progress further? Um, Whether, like it's been mentioned, whether are you that person to get in touch and ask questions and organize for a chat just so you can progress your knowledge further? Um, Are you doing a piece of work? What can, can you do that extra bit of research that will help you with that piece of work? What can you do next to just improve? And I feel like it's a really good um, way to sort of like progress your learning and your skills as well. Brilliant. Yes. So um we've not got I think don't think we've got any graduates here other than our panelist graduates. So maybe even for just a little piece of advice for each other. So we'll start with you, Emma, because obviously you graduated the longest time ago. Not like a lot, I'm not trying to say <laughs> that you're really old. <laughs> not trying to say like all those years ago, but it's it's probably been a few years, hasn't it? Or oh, I can't I can't keep up with the timeline, but I, I, you know sort of I know that there was a delay with your graduation <laughs> as well so we won't go into that too much but um, <laughs> it's you've, like you've, I graduated it happened you've been <laughs> you've been in your permanent role for a few years now haven't you so so yeah. um you know to, to the more newer graduates I guess what would your piece of advice be you know now they're in the workplace and finished their apprenticeship what would you what would you say um I'd say embrace being creative and that's still probably 
every level of your career here mm-hmm. but sometimes if you're a creative person you'll sometimes get a bit of a condescending like oh you're the creative one whereas actually creative people are like natural problem solvers and we can look at things differently and I think creative people are also quite good at bringing other people onto projects and and connecting people up so I think actually even if you're going into like the driest sort of board meeting still have that kind of creative um, mindset on because you don't know what opportunities that will bring and the other one since graduating which I think has been an excellent one for me is the importance of finding a mentor so I've got a mentor Jackie who's our director of legal and commercial so a different area to what I would be working in however having someone who's more senior in the business and getting their outlook on things first of all you've got a bit of it seems like a natural ally but the amount of like learning and coaching that she's been doing for me and it's been brilliant to have that person as a bit of a sounding board as well and it's really helped my professional development so if you find someone who you find really interesting or inspiring possibly ask them if they could be a mentor because it's been a game changer for me yeah absolutely really good piece of advice there um definitely just have to have that sort of courage to reach out and you know like you say especially if you, you see somebody who you admire um and you can learn so much from them so that's that's great thanks emma meg how about yourself have you got to your to your fellow cohorts just to let everyone else know meg ira and marco are in the same cohort uh so they sort of graduated at the same time last year um but go on meg over to you so i'll say two little things one for, for everyone I suppose is just keep learning I feel like yes we've got the qualification but there's always so much more to learn but also still connect with our group of graduates um we it, that's why it's a, it's a lovely little network to have like I've said previously we've, we've all been through that the same apprenticeship journey so why not still connect with each other um like I still look I look at the work that Ira and Marco do and the girls at Trending Travel and I think oh I don't know much about what they like that element of what they're doing but I suppose if having that ability to reach out to each other and say oh can you give me a piece of advice of that it's nice because you're sort of helping each other and you're sort of starting to specialize in different areas um so you can start to learn from each other which I think is a really nice thing amazing thanks Meg Ira how about yourself last piece of advice your fellow I saw this before pre-hand and I was like guys I feel like we're all we've all got such similar attitudes that anything I say you're gonna be like I'm already doing that (laughs) I'm already already on it (laughs) um but I would say like the thing that was most viable to me after I graduated was don't get stuck which is kind of like like Mark and I have kind of similar career roles where we just do anything that involves visual assets um and that includes website design animation illustration um and I was going to get kind of stuck in the graphic design role but I really miss managing and doing content specifically for socials or specifically ad content because that's what I prefer to do um and having the the courage and being like actually I don't want to get pigeonholed into this role to say I, I think my skill set's better suited here and in in this role um and being able to say that to my employer and then him encouraging me to discover that and doing extra courses on top to not get stuck in something that I didn't actually want to do. Um, and that's the same advice for like anyone mm-hmm. is like that not everyone is completely happy with, I feel like we are just really lucky that we got employers that we really gel with. Um, but if you're not, you're not stuck in that situation that can, you can do things, you can progress, you can use a network to better yourself and, and your situation so yeah perfect yeah I couldn't have said it better totally agree and like you say I like the fact that you started that by saying you know everyone here's got that same sort of similar mindset yeah. and you are all you know sort of agreeing with what the advice that each other's giving so that's <laughs> brilliant Marco how about yourself um it's very similar to Megan's point really about um the learning doesn't stop mm-hmm. uh, I'm still learning something new every day after graduating uh, and so keeping that growth and, you know, making sure that you, you do learn uh, is important. And when times get, you know, a bit hard, uh, then always remember to look back and and see how far you've come with you, with yourself from where you started and use it to kind of motivate you to, you know, to keep learning and growing. Uh, and one thing that helped me personally was um, not abandoning the portfolios after you've graduated. Uh, and so I'm in the process of just rebuilding mine, but just to have a place to just proudly show off your work and your achievements uh, and document your own progression so that you can look back and say 
okay, I want to create, you know, my next work is going to be the next, it's going to be the best piece of work I'm going to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's that that progression and, you know, the owning your self-development and, you know, having that portfolio just kind of encapsulates all of that, I think. So that's my piece of advice. That's really good. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard that before, actually, but it's a really good point to keep it on you. Know, even if you like, you're not job searching or anything like that, but just keep it. Exactly. So it's like you say, document yourself and see how far you've come. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Well, um, I'm going to ask if anyone else in, in the audience has any questions for our for our graduates before we, we pop off and enjoy our weekends. If anyone has any questions, yes, go on, Claire. Um, hello, I don't know if this sound should be working now. Yeah, perfect. Um, you were talking about like building on your skills after being an apprentice. Um, and I guess this is just like open to everyone. Um, but like how generally does that fit alongside being employed? Like, assumably you don't do like another apprenticeship to build on it, but it's like within, with something like that within the within the um job role that you're doing I was just wondering what like what the structure of that would be or what you would like look to if there was any specific um like people or groups that lead these courses who wants to take that one do I see I Emma look I think Emma's looking for her oh no go on you go Meg and then we'll go over to Emma I was just going to say sometimes um th- companies can well have a budget for um like extra training and things so it could be something to ask if that is something that is available to you um where you can do extra courses and things on uh whether you wanted to do like more video editing or work it uh, paid ads anything like that that you feel like you want to build up your skills on I suppose if you have that conversation with your employer maybe it's an option there obviously you can't say but for everyone but um it, it could be an option yeah, I'd say a lot, a lot of employers would, even if they don't sort of have it in, you know, as part of their package, like some do, they'll say, you know, you have X amount for a training budget. But even if you don't have that, definitely worth having that conversation, even during your apprenticeship, really, if you do see a course that's sort of outside of the apprenticeship that you want to do, because I'd say nine times out of 10, the employers are going to, you know, want you to do that because it's developing skills for you to better it, get better at your role, really. Um, does anyone else want to add to, to that at all? Yeah, yeah. Um... I was just thinking when I got my um, first kind of graduate role as social media exec, that, that was the title originally. Um, but my my role then ended up changing into social media and PR. <laughs> Sorry. Is it the dog? <laughs> <laughs> just got out of the bath. Sorry. <laughs> you know, when you're like, oh my God, are they just going to walk in? That'd be fine. <laughs> so I was just saying that my role originally started as social media exec and then it changed to social media and PR. And that's because I kind of demonstrated that PR was an area, was an area I was really interested in and I really enjoyed writing. And I think because I could then demonstrate it as well, mm. they quite like that. So you're kind of building a bit of a business case as well for it or saying, oh, I've seen this course. Um, I'd really like to do this because this is how it could also benefit the business. Um, and But you have got to be a bit bold as well to kind of, and believe in yourself to say oh no I really want to take this opportunity as well okay so it's kind of like it's not there's like a specific route as such is like open so long as you can kind of convince your your employer in that. that sounds really weird but like you know yeah there's so. bits of that but I think um also speak to have you got a HR department um I don't think so I think it's quite a small company that I'm part of Okay, there might be someone who's kind of part of their role is overseeing like development and skills as well. And sometimes if the company's like earning over a certain amount of money, which would normally go into like the apprenticeship levy, you can actually utilize that part of money for other skill based learning as well. So, again, it helps the company then to kind of put more like training options and stuff out there for you. Okay, can I just yeah. add, quickly add to this? Um, yes. Because that's something that I actually asked during my apprenticeship interview because I knew that I wanted to like carry on learning because I rejected my uni offers and that was a very scary experience for me (laughs) so I was like in my interview I'm gonna ask Um, and I work for like a small business as well and the way we did it was um I saw this thing called girls in marketing on LinkedIn and I stalked them stalked them for a while um and then they actually reached out to my company to be a sponsor and they 
they saw that I was on LinkedIn and was like, just she went part of the mentoring program. So that's one way is to like utilize a network on LinkedIn. You'll get invites to different webinars or different free training or free coaching sessions. So just staying on top of those. And um, so that's one way and that's free. Um, the other way would be, I actually discussed it during my appraisal meetings with my line manager. Yeah. So I said, um, you know, this when we were talking about strengths and weaknesses, I said, okay, well, I do want to actually develop, for me, it was my motion graphic skills. So is there, is there a way that we can put that in my work hours or is it do that? And my employee was really happy for me to just do it on Friday evenings because right. um, I work from home. So he was like, okay, so if you've allocated that time, then the business knows not to contact you during those hours. Um, and yeah, the other one is literally just YouTube. Like I said, <laughs> yes. Like, they were like, can you animate a video? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> on YouTube, on Google, how to animate a video on After Effects. <laughs> <laughs> like uh. can you design a website <laughs> absolutely ux design googling it like 100 percent. like i've never i've never designed a website before <laughs> but now i know how and that's yeah. literally just through google and like adobe xd the free tutorials yeah, yeah. and that's like just funny. sitting sitting in my own hours because i've got no social life anyway with netflix on and just doing those tutorials and then like slowly building that up so it, it depends on how nice your employer is and, and if there's a budget or not but they don't think like because there's no money you can't there's definitely ways you can get around it yeah no that's really interesting thank you <laughs> amazing thank you everyone uh, any more questions from anyone else in the audience we've had loads of advice there so you know that's been brilliant thank you so much um and yeah thank you all for for taking the time the speakers the amazing speakers of course and also um our current apprentices like emma said you know it really does make you you know for you to come and take your time out and you know turn up to this meeting that that's sort of like one first step of you know um building those networks and putting yourself out there and that kind of thing so yeah I continue to do continue to do, to do that because it's brilliant lovely and well that's absolutely brilliant so I, I'll, I'll call that the end of the event um can we do a little screenshot shall we do Meg as we're all smiling because we're recording this anyway mm. um we're going to post stuff on social so uh yeah everyone smile <laughs> at the camera just take my dressing gown off <laughs> <laughs> Have we got it? I feel like that was the awkward part of a YouTube video where they forget to edit the thumbnail. <laughs> Amazing. Brilliant. Right. Thanks so much, everyone. And again, thanks for your time, speakers, and amazing advice there. So we'll be passing that around. We're going to use, we'll use snippets and stuff and, and pass that around to everyone. So thank you so much. And uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Thank, yeah, thank you. you so much for that. Yeah. See you later. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone.